Good morning, guys. With Easter coming up, we got some stuff to talk about. We have Deuteronomy 12.4. It says, Do not worship the Lord your God in the way these pagan people worship their gods. You shall not worship the Lord your God in that way. You shall not worship the Lord your God in that way. You shall not worship unto the Lord your God. You shall not worship the Lord your God with such things. You shall not act in this way towards the Lord your God. You shall not act like this towards your the Lord your God. You shall not act like this towards the Lord your God. You shall not do towards Yah your God. You shall not act like this towards the Lord your God. Don't worship the Lord your God this way. Don't worship the Lord your God this way. Ye shall not do unto Jehovah your God, and ye shall not do so to Lord Jehovah your God. Ye shall not do... Okay. There's the basics. So... The New Living Translation is, Don't worship the Lord your God in the way these pagan people worship their gods. So at the very beginning of this, she says, Hey you, and she does the pointing finger. Freemason hand sign. Yeah you, stop scrolling. You do not want to miss the good news that we've got for you this Easter weekend at Mountain West. I tried to stop all these things. The two four fingers pointing down, all this stuff. You don't want to miss what we've got going on at Mountain West Church. But Mountain West is the as above, so below. So if you look at the M, it makes an M. And then if you look to the right, it makes a W. Or it's the M upright and then the M upside down. But that is... Basically, it's kind of like the palindrome thing where you can spell words forwards and backwards, but then you can also do stuff upside down and right side up and all that kind of stuff. So, these people are claiming that they have the good news of Easter at Mountain West. It's going to be a time like no other. There's going to be incredible worship. There's going to be exciting things for your family and for your kids. And Jesus will be glorified. And so, I want to... And Jesus will be glorified in an Easter celebration. But Easter is Ishtar, and it has nothing to do with the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It has nothing to do with the death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua HaMashiach. It is a pagan ceremony. How are you going to bring glory to Yah Elohim if you are practicing a pagan ceremony? invite you to join us here this weekend at Mountain West Church. We've got gatherings on Friday at 7 p.m. and we'll be doing communion on Sunday. Your Elohim, thus cut off from before you the nations which you go to dispossess, and you dispossess them and dwell on their land. Guard yourself that you are not ensnared to follow them after they are destroyed from before you, and that you do not inquire about their gods, saying, How do these nations serve their gods? And let me do so too. Do not do so to Yahweh, your Elohim. For every abomination which Yahweh hates, they have done to their gods. All the words I am commanding you, guard to do it. Do not add to it, nor take away from it. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 29 through 32. Okay, let's see. Easter is only in five weeks away here, blah, blah, blah. If you come down here and we look at that thing that says swipe and the three chevrons, it's a 666. Let's see. I bet if we looked at that Mountain West logo, we could find three chevrons also. Or three going up and three coming down or something with that. So... Easter at Mountain West Church is going to be an incredible weekend. You can have communion. You can have Easter egg hunts, petting zoo, baptism, and gathering. They're having an Easter egg hunt. 
at a church that's worshiping Satan. So, since this is exposing Bethel, Easter Sunday, Easter Sunday, Easter hunt, Easter egg hunt, that's Bethel kids, uh, Easter Sunday service, Easter at Bethel, Sunday, March 31st, Easter, first congregation, oh, that's a different Bethel. Many of these are Bethel Church Reading. And all of these are pagans. Here's Little Country Church in Redding, California. This is the second biggest church probably behind Bethel. It's probably, there, there's probably four congregations that are made up of a thousand plus people in Redding. But Little Country Church, Redding, California, Easter services, they also are practicing pagans. And they claim to be followers of Yeshua HaMashiach. This is where I grew up, inside Little Country Church. It's a dispensational theology church. It's connected to Chuck Smith at Calvary Chapels. And they have nothing to do with the faith once preached. The church I grew up, to, grew up in has nothing to do with the faith once preached. They are making up God in their own image. They are doing what scripture says not to do. Don't worship me in the ways that the pagans worship me. But then they run to the pagans for all of their ho holidays and they've thrown out the holy days. The holy feast dates, gone. Holidays that worship pagans, we're all about that. It brings in 10 times more people on one day. We get 10 times more donations in one day. Right? Don't worship me in the same way you worship the other pagan gods. Scripture says so. So, is Easter a pagan holiday? It absolutely is. Verses 29 through 32. Do so to Yahweh. Masons, which you go to dispossess, and you dispossess them? When Yahweh, your Elohim, does cut off from before you the nations which you go to dispossess, and you dispossess them and dwell on their land, guard yourself that you are not ensnared to follow them after they are destroyed from before you, and that you do not inquire about their gods, saying, How do these nations serve their gods? And let me do so too. Do not do so to Yahweh, your Elohim. For every abomination which Yahweh hates, they have done to their gods. All the words I am commanding you, guard to do it. Do not add to it, nor take away from it. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 29 through 32. This is what Yahweh commanded Israel when he brought them into their promised land. As they were taking over the land from the other nations, they were commanded not to worship Yahweh the same way the other nations worship their gods. Yahweh said, do not add to his words he commanded, nor take away from it. Over the centuries, this command and message has been lost and forgotten. And one thing many people do today is add to his commands. We do many things today in his name because in our minds it seems right, though he has never commanded us to do so. If you follow this channel, I've spoken about Christmas, Halloween, Valentine's Day, and many other traditions. All of these holy days have been given and taught to us, not by the commands of the Father, but by adopting traditions from the other nations. We have done exactly what Yahweh has commanded us not to do. We are following the example of the other nations and how they serve their gods and saying we should do so as well. Now, the majority does not do this knowingly, but unknowingly. And though their heart is in the right place, they are still being disobedient to the one they love and serve. Yahweh does not allow us to worship him in any way that we please. And he especially does not want us serving him in the way that the Gentile nations serve their pagan God. So it is wise for us all to examine the traditions and customs that we practice in our worship of our Savior and make sure it's what he desires from us and not customs and traditions that have been taken from pagan nations and then rebranded as Christian. 
Many people reject that message and believe they can do what they want because they feel that their heart is in the right place. And they say things like, God knows my heart. What many do not consider is that their heart is possibly telling Yahweh that his words are not as important as their own way of doing things. If we are a believer in Yahshua, the Messiah, transliterated into Jesus Christ, then we all must have this huge understanding, and you will find it in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. It says, Enter in through the narrow gate, because the gate is wide, and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter in through it. Because the gate is narrow, and the way is hard-pressed, which leads to life, and there are few who find it. So many of us have been trying to enter the kingdom of Elohim through a very wide gate that says we can do what we want and Elohim will accept it because he knows that we love him in our hearts. But what he told us in his word is that the gate to him is narrow and few will find it because many want to go through that easier, broad gate. The goal of this ministry is to bring you down a more narrow path. And as we walk down it, you will see that traditions like Christmas, Valentine's Day, Halloween, and yes, Easter are too big and do not fit in the narrow path that leads to life. Like I said, I have already done videos in regard to other holidays like Christmas and Valentine's Day. So if you have not watched those, please go to the Pagan Holidays playlist and those days will be broken down to you as well. This video will cover the Holy Day of Easter and explain why it doesn't fit on the narrow path. I hope this blesses you. Let's begin. So let's cover what Easter is, so there's no confusion. Dictionary.com defines it as an annual Christian festival in commemoration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is a day that Christians remember that our Messiah, Yahshua, rose from the dead and conquered death, now giving us redemption through him. Now make no mistake, this event was miraculous. If you do not completely understand it, I suggest you watch my History of Religion series, in particular, parts 42 and 43. But the resurrection of the Messiah is the foundation of the faith of a believer. Because it is the foundation of our belief, it is not something that we need to celebrate in particular one day out of the year, but it is something that we should celebrate every day of our lives. It's something that should be in our remembrance at all times. So this video is in no way telling you not to celebrate his resurrection. But on the contrary, I'm telling you to celebrate it more. Celebrate it every day. Thank him every day. Believe in him every day. But that is what Easter is. Now, the crucifixion and resurrection happened during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is more commonly known as the Passover. You remember what Yahshua said during the Last Supper? With fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Luke chapter 22, verse 15. Or John chapter 13, verse 1 says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Yahshua knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father. There are many more scriptures, but the point should be understood that Yahshua was crucified during the time of Passover. This understanding is important, because if we are truly worshiping the day of his resurrection, then it should always align with the time of Passover. So when is Passover? Just like Easter, it is not held on the same day every year like Christmas is held on December 25th. The answer is found in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 4 through 6. It says, These are the appointed times of Yahweh, set apart gatherings, which you are to proclaim at their appointed times. In the 14th day of the first month, at evening, is Yahweh's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, to Yahweh. Seven days you eat unleavened bread. This is how the Passover is set. Remember, during those ancient days, people didn't have a calendar on their walls that told them the dates like we do today. And the Israelites followed a different calendar than what we follow. So the Passover was set according to the moon cycle. The first month on the Hebrew calendar is the month of Nisan. So again, if we are celebrating the resurrection of the Messiah, the calculation of the date for Easter should be very similar because he was crucified during the time of the Passover. So how is the date of Easter calculated? The date of Easter was determined by Rome at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. Now this is a subject 
that should be discussed on its own. But they decided that that date of Easter should be on the first Sunday after the first full moon following the spring equinox. So, to simplify, on our Gregorian calendar, we mark March 21st as the first day of spring. This is what the spring equinox is. The first Sunday that comes on the first full moon that comes after the spring equinox is how Easter is determined. Now, this can sometimes make Passover and Easter fall during the same times, but they also could be held almost a month away from each other. Look at this chart of the different dates since the year 2000. This point is easily driven home by looking at the year 2005, 2008, and the most recent 2016. In 2016, the date of Passover was on Friday, April 22nd, but Easter that year was already held on March 27th. Now, how can you celebrate the Messiah's resurrection almost a month before the time of his crucifixion? Just by this easy review, we can see that something is wrong here. So we should dig deeper. I mean, why would people that say that they are worshiping the resurrection of our Savior worship it during a time that has nothing to do with when he was actually killed and three days later resurrected? And if Rome made the determination of when we should celebrate Easter, where did they get it from? And why do we even call it Easter? There are so many more questions we could ask as well. But all of this needs to be understood. So let's go back further in time before the Messiah. If you have watched part one of my History of Religion series, you will know that all roads to paganism go back to Nimrod and the Tower of Babel. If you have not watched this, please make sure you do, because it will give you a good foundation for your understanding. This will just be an overview. Nimrod is the father of paganism. He was worshipped as the sun god, known by many names. The Hebrews refer to him as Baal, as well as Moloch. His followers were Baal worshippers, and they became associated with idolatry, demon worship, human sacrifice, and other occult practices. Nimrod's mother slash wife was Semiramis. When Nimrod died, she became pregnant and found another way to stay in power. She told the people it was the spirit of Nimrod that impregnated her. She claimed she was having a virgin birth from the spirit of Nimrod. She claimed to have slept with no man and was impregnated by Nimrod's spirit. Nimrod was now a father, and Semiramis was the mother. She made herself a goddess, claiming that she was divinely created. She was, in fact, the moon goddess. She had them believe she came down to Earth from the moon in a giant moon egg that fell into the Euphrates River. The Queen of Babylon, a.k.a. Madonna, a.k.a. Ishtar, a.k.a. Semiramis, became known as the moon goddess. When the baby was born, it would then be celebrated as a god, as Nimrod, back from the underworld. She claimed that her baby was reborn, renewed, or otherwise reincarnated Nimrod. His birthday is celebrated on December 25th, but that's discussed in the Christmas video. People have been looking for the promised Savior since the beginning of mankind, according to the prophecy of Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. They were persuaded by Semiramis to believe that Tammuz was the Savior. Now, Tammuz was killed by a wild boar. Semiramis, now widow of Nimrod, mother of Tammuz, came to be represented as the pagan fertility goddess. The original pagan festival of Easter was a sex orgy that celebrated the return of life via the fertility of Semiramis, a.k.a. Ishtar's conception of Tammuz. Worshippers of the ancient Babylonian religion celebrated the conception, not birth, but conception of Tammuz on the first Sunday after the full moon that followed the spring equinox. They celebrated it by baking cakes to Ishtar, getting drunk, engaging in sex orgies and prostitution in the temple of Ishtar. Women were required to celebrate the conception of Tammuz by laying down in the temple and having sex with whoever entered. Babies were then sacrificed in the honor of these pagan gods, and their blood was consumed by the worshippers. The priest of Easter would sacrifice infants, human babies, and take the eggs of Easter slash Ishtar as symbols of fertility and dye them in the blood of the sacrificed infants. 
the Easter eggs would hatch on December 25th, nine months later. The same day her son Tammuz, the reincarnate sun god, would be born. Tammuz was later killed, like I said, by the wild boar. Another part of his legend says that after his death, through the power of his mother's tears, Tammuz was resurrected in the form of the new vegetation that appeared on the earth. Semiramis also proclaimed a 40-day period of time of sorrow for each year prior to the anniversary of the death of Tammuz. During this time, no meat was to be eaten. This is what became known as Lent in Roman Catholic tradition. Worshippers were to meditate upon the sacred mysteries of Baal and Tammuz, and they make the sign of the Tao, a cross, in front of their hearts as they worshipped. They also ate sacred cakes with the marking of a T or a cross on the top. Every year on the first Sunday after the first full moon, after the spring equinox, a celebration was made. It was Ishtar Sunday. It was celebrated with rabbits and eggs. Semiramis also proclaimed that because Tammuz was killed by a pig, that a pig must be eaten on that Sunday. So during this time, before Israel was ever in their promised land, before Yahshua was ever born, the pagan world worshipped the resurrection of their sun god. And the mother goddess was worshipped as the fertility goddess. It would be known by many names over the course of history. Here is a list of the pagan gods throughout the different empires, cultures, and nations. Semiramis is the whore of Babylon, who is referenced in Revelation chapter 17. You will see references to these things in scripture. Ezekiel chapter 8 verses 12 through 15 say, And he said to me, Son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel are doing in the dark? Each one in the room of his idols. For they say, Yahweh does not see us. Yahweh has forsaken the land. And he said to me, You are to still see greater abominations which they are doing. And he brought me to the door of the north gate of the house of Yahweh. And I saw a woman sitting there, weeping for Tammuz. Then he said to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? You are to see still greater abominations than these. You see, this was an abomination to Yahweh. Now, let's look at Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 17 through 19. Do you not see what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead dough to make cakes for the queen of heaven. And they are pour out drink offerings to other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Or again, in Jeremiah chapter 44, I will read verse 19 but you should read through verse 29 on your own. And when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings to her, did we make cakes for her to worship her and pour our drink offerings to her without our husband's permission? Samaramis is the queen of heaven. And again, she was known by many names. In the Old Testament, she is also referred to as Astaroth. You will see her mentioned in Judges chapter 10, verse 6 or 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 5. This is the mother goddess and the celebration of Easter, and the customs associated with Easter all come from this worship. It has nothing to do with Yahshua. It is the commemoration of the conception of the reborn sun god born on December 25th. This is what Easter is. Now, without going into complete detail about Rome and their supposed conversion to Christianity, there are some dots that should be connected. The Romans were pagans before their conversion. They believed in the same father God, mother God, son of God concept created by ancient Babylon. They just replaced the names and made us believe that Yahweh is the father God, Mary is the mother goddess, and Jesus Christ is the son of God. They already celebrated these pagan festivals. This is why the date of Easter was set to the first Sunday of the first full moon after the spring equinox. They set this date in accordance with their already known pagan festival. They just replaced the meaning with the resurrection of Christ. Easter is a pagan holiday, regardless if we have decided to change the reason why we acknowledge the date, even down to the name Easter. Now, many researchers say that the name Easter derives from the other name of the moon goddess Semiramis, which is Ishtar, and that Easter is a correct pronunciation of this name, Ishtar, 
and Semitic dialects. Another says the word Easter is of Saxon origin and it is derived from the word esoter, aka Easter. The ancient Saxons in Northern Europe worshiped the goddess Oester at the time of the spring equinox. This is the same mother goddess, queen of heaven. Either way, no matter where it comes from, it is easily discerned that this name has nothing to do with Yahshua. Nothing at all. And the funny thing is that churches today know this, but instead of them digging deeper, they just decided to change the name to the Resurrection Sunday and make that the solution. But that is far from the solution. Changing the name does not change what is being worshipped. Now, there's a common misunderstanding in the church that these holidays were just hijacked by unbelievers for commercialization, like Santa Claus for Christmas and the Easter Bunny with Easter. But that is not correct. Let's take a look at where many of these customs associated with Easter come from. Easter eggs. The symbol of the rebirth of life in the springtime is the egg. Eggs, since ancient times, were known to be very prominent as symbols of new life and resurrection. Ishtar's supernatural egg was now considered an emblem of generative life and rebirth, better known as Ishtar's eggs or Easter eggs. The Easter egg is in reference to a woman's reproduction or fertility. This makes sense as Ishtar is the goddess of fertility, and a woman's egg is how she produces. As I explained earlier, the priest of Easter would sacrifice infants, human babies. You see, many babies will be born around December 25th from those sex orgies that began on the feast of Ishtar in the spring. And then horribly, many of these babies would then be sacrificed the following Easter. The priest would then take the eggs as symbols of fertility and dye them in the blood of the sacrificed infants. Horrible. So anytime you are dealing with Easter eggs, dyeing them, and Easter egg hunts, you are participating in an ancient pagan culture that dealt in blood sacrifice and worship of the mother goddess. Nothing about Easter eggs are harmless. It just has been marked. This is not the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is the faith of the pagans. This is my old church trying to say that they're only doing things that are inside scripture, but they are lying to my brothers and sisters in the name of their God money. They will say and do whatever they have to to get you to come into their group and continue to fund their group, but their group has nothing to do with the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob from Scripture. This is all pagan worship. Even the Sunday worship is pagan. It has nothing to do with Yeshua. world to come together this is our super sunday amen this so this is pastor brian blank from little country church and he just said see our super sunday amen and he's doing the freemason hand sign of rebellion called the clenched fist he's not following the teachings of yeshua hamashiach or there wouldn't be a Sunday worshiping church. They would be keeping the Sabbath holy, and that would be from sundown on Friday until sundown on Saturday. What Brian is teaching is another gospel, the gospel that does not exist inside Scripture. He will say, we're reading the Bible line by line by line by line by line. But when they do that, then they start adding all this other man-made theology that's called dispensational theology. And dispensational theology has nothing to do with the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It has to do with these Babylonians who want to worship on Sunday. It's our day to celebrate his good community. Already this morning on my way here, I think I received eight, eight texts from local pastors in town, from the, our local churches, just saying, isn't this a great day for us to share the Lord together? And, and so this is a special day for the body of Christ around the world to...
No, Brian Blank, you are a Luciferian. You are trying to get the people of Yeshua to follow you to the lake of fire. This having eight other pastors saying, isn't it great that we're all worshiping Esther on the same day together, but calling ourselves followers of Yeshua and fleecing the flock and getting them to give us millions and millions and millions of dollars of their money, even though we have nothing to do with actually following. This is a faith that is to be doers of the faith and not hearers only, which means that we are to keep the Moedim, we are to keep the Torah and we are to keep the Sabbath. What you are doing, Brian Blank of Little Country Church, is destroying everything that Yeshua HaMashiach came to make. You are making your thoughts into the God that these people are worshiping. Come together. Well, good morning. For those of you that uh, maybe this is your first time here, or we haven't had a chance to talk together. My name is Brian. I have the great joy of, of uh, leading this local fellowship called Little Country Church or LCC. You know, we live in an incredible community. Already this morning on my way here, I think I received eight, eight texts from local pastors in town from the, our local churches, just saying, isn't this a great day for us to share the Lord together? And, and so this is a special day for the body of Christ around the world to come together. This is our super Sunday, amen? This is our day to celebrate his goodness and his faithfulness to all of us. And we are so thankful just to have you here with us to uh, just kind of come together. You know, for us at Little Country Church, Sunday mornings, are, are really the priority of Sunday morning is for the family to come together. That's our family morning. It's But the Sabbath isn't on Sunday. It only became on Sunday because of Constantine jerking around the... We've got the other video about it. Go watch the... That, uh, yeah. So, Sunday worship, eh, bad. Brian's trying to tell you Sunday worship is fantastic. I'm going to leave a link for the Moedim part one, the Sabbath, because that's where these guys are jerking us around and not keeping us inside the faith once preached that we are to earnestly contend for. They're adding to and subtracting from the scriptures. So this whole thing where Pastor Brian's telling us Sunday, 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 this is what we've decided we're going to do. God said to keep the Sabbath holy, and that's from sundown on Friday until sundown on Saturday. So if you're practicing Sunday worship, you are practicing a pagan ritual. So, Easter, on the lawn, on a Sunday, April 17th, doesn't line up with the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It lines up with paganism. Here we have Bill Johnson, Easter Sunday service. Join Easter service in Bethel Church. Bill Johnson live. Pagans, not followers of Yeshua HaMashiach, pagan worshipers. And had Easter egg hunts. Question the leadership there. The Easter Bunny. The funny thing is that the Easter Bunny is often associated with Easter eggs, but ironically, rabbits do not lay eggs. The rabbit or hare is actually another symbol of fertility. The rabbit is one of the most fertile creatures on earth and held sacred to the fertility religion Semiramis had created in Babylon. It is simply a fertility symbol, indirectly referencing the mother goddess. That's all it is when you see the Easter Bunny. Is talking about fertility. Eating ham. It is a very common thing for Christians celebrating Easter to eat ham for their Easter dinner. Ask anybody why they do this. They probably will tell you they don't know. It's just a tradition. This is another tradition completely from ancient Babylon. Tammuz was killed by a wild boar. And during this time, Semiramis also proclaimed that because Tammuz was killed by a pig, that a pig must be eaten on that Sunday in remembrance of his death. Every Christian eating a ham on Easter Sunday is doing this in remembrance of Tammuz. Hot cross buns. 
It was also common for pagans to bake cakes to offer to the mother goddess, the queen of heaven, on the Friday before the Easter festival. This is where we gained the custom of hot cross buns. Very simply, the buns were made to be offered to the mother goddess. It was a completely pagan custom and shown through scripture that I mentioned earlier from Ezekiel and Jeremiah. These buns that were made for the queen of heaven are an abomination to Yahweh. Part of my family is from Jamaica, and every Easter, a big part of the tradition is to have bun and cheese. When the British captured Jamaica, they brought the cross bun custom to the island. Over time, Jamaica made their original English cross bun its own way, by using molasses in the mix instead of honey. Eating hot cross buns may be a custom that is not practiced as often by other countries, but in Jamaica, eating bun and cheese during Easter is extremely common. They just don't know that they are doing a pagan practice of making cakes of bread for the queen of heaven. This is mother goddess worship, and it was expressly spoken against in scripture. Now, all this history plainly reveals the pagan origins of Easter and why any believer in Yahshua should completely reject this day. Easter is a celebration of a resurrection or reconception, but not of Yahshua HaMashiach but of the pagan god Tammuz. The only reason we recognize this day is because of the infiltration of the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church had a practice of incorporating pagan festivals. They placed Christian names over them and called them Christian. This was done in order to make Christianity more acceptable and familiar to heathen worshipers whom the church was trying to attract. They completely ignored the scripture I used from Deuteronomy in the start of this video. Many of the people in the pagan Roman Empire probably were as willing to give up their pagan gods too easy. These gods that they accredited for giving them their lives and well-being. To assure a greater assimilation with the up-and-coming Christian narratives that are growing in the empire, they simply mixed paganism with Christianity, creating a false belief that had false worship of the Messiah. The father wants his children not to have any dealings with the ways of the pagans and how they worship their gods. Throughout the Old Testament, there are consistent scriptures from Yahweh that directed them against following the pagans. Like Leviticus chapter 18, verses 2 through 4, it says, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, I am Yahweh, your Elohim. Do not do as they do in the land of Egypt, where you dwelt, and do not do as they do in the land of Canaan where I am bringing you, and do not walk in their laws. You shall observe my judgments and guard my laws to walk in them. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. He never wanted his children to walk in the ways of the pagans. We are to be set apart from them. One sec. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. where I am bringing you, and do not walk in their laws. You shall observe my judgments and guard my laws to walk in them. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. But my church said that the law is gone. We don't have to do the law anymore. So my Sunday worshiping, pagan worshiping, Sunday worshiping church is telling me that the law is gone. But that's not what scripture said. It says, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, I am Yahweh, your Elohim. Do not do as they do in the land of Egypt, where you dwelt. And do not do as they do in the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you. And do not walk in their laws. You shall observe my judgments and guard my laws to walk in them. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. He never wanted his children to walk in the ways of the pagans. We are to be set apart from them. How could we be set apart if we are engaging in their type of worship? Worshiping Yahweh the way they worship their gods, when he expressly spoke against doing exactly that. The holy day of Easter, or Ishtar, is intermingled with the overall themes of fertility, renewal, a descent into darkness, and the triumph of light over darkness, or rather, Elohim's darkness. That is the way Satan plays it. 
This is the day when pagans celebrate the sun because of the fertile moon goddess. I am positive that there will be people in the comments that will ignore many of these facts and choose to believe that their heart is pure in their worship of Yahweh on Easter because they want to celebrate the resurrection. But you are not. This day, just like Christmas, is worship of Satan through his pagan form. The Father gets no glory from this, and we provoke him to anger. We cannot choose to worship him whatever way we desire because we feel we are coming from a genuine place. He has never told us that he accepts that type of worship. He wants to be narrow in our ways, in our worship of him. If you want to recognize the day, he has specifically spoken about feasts such as Passover in his word. Those days he has actually specifically spoken about. During these times, we recognize the Passover and worship Yahshua as our Passover lamb. We get together and partake in eating of his bread, which is his body, and drink of wine which represents his blood he shed for us. The word actually speaks about celebrating Passover and says nothing about celebrating Easter. The church is so backwards today. If you want to celebrate something, celebrate the Passover. This is the time when Yahweh revealed himself to the world. This is the time when he foretold of sending his son as our Passover lamb to redeem mankind from their sins. If you're looking for